Let's take a look at commas now. In the case of commas, use commas between elements in a series of three or more items, and that is a list. So first we did A, B, C, and finally we did D. A series like that is where you use a comma very typically. Here's an example. The height, width, or depth. In a study by Stacy Newcomb and Bentler. So I just draw your attention to comma, comma, and then we have this conjunction here, this last linking word. Comma, comma, and then we have the conjunction here. Now remember, this is the American approach, right? So we do have a comma for the last one in the list. An incorrect example would be in a study of Stacy and Newcomb. Well, we're missing the comma here, right? We need that one there. You use a comma to set off a non-restrictive or non-essential clause. So, for example, switch A, comma, which was on a panel, comma, controlled the recording device. So, the easy way to think about this is if you have a phrase, like here, which was on a panel. This is describing something. If you can cut this, remove it, cut it out, and now read the sentence without it. Switch A controlled the recording device. The question is, is that a complete sentence? If that is a complete sentence, then this clause is a non-restrictive clause. That means you do not have to have it. And if you do not have to have it, then you need to use a comma to separate it. So in this case, we use two commas because we have the beginning, switch A, comma, which was on a panel, comma, controlled the recording device. So this bit here is the non-restrictive clause. Use a comma before, use a comma after. Here's another example. Statistically significant differences were found for both ratings of controllability by self, F3, comma, 132 equals 19.58, p-value less than 0.001, blah, 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 all of these things down here. And then down here we have a comma. And ratings of controllability by others, comma, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're putting a comma here and we're putting a comma down here. Oops, let me clean, clean this up a little bit. Okay, here we go, let's look at this again. So we're gonna be putting a comma here, and we're gonna be putting a comma here. Again, we're gonna be putting a comma here, and at the end, we don't have a comma because it's the end of the sentence, so that's a period. But if we had written more, then we would have a comma even here. So what are we doing? Well, here we're doing the statistical information, the F score, the degrees of freedom, the P value, right? Is this very important? Well, yeah, it's important information, but do you need it for the sentence? Well, let's do our test. If I cut this out, I just take that out and cut it. And if I take this other piece and cut that out too, and now I read the sentence. Statistically significant differences were found for both ratings of controllability by self and ratings of controllability by others, period. That sentence is perfectly good. It makes sense. So do I need to have a comma? Yes, because those are non-restrictive clauses. You can take them out of the sentence and the sentence is still a complete sentence. So comma before, comma after. You use a comma to separate two independent clauses that are conjoined by a conjunction. Now, this is a really important idea and easy to get confused. Let's look at an example here. Cedar shavings covered the floor, comma, and paper was available for shredding and nest building. So this is talking about birds, I guess, or some kind of animal. And where is our comma? Our comma is here. And what is this here? This is a conjunction. So a conjunction is a word that can bring two other parts of the sentences together. Now, if you have a comma and you have a conjunction together, what does that tell you? That tells you that before 
This must have a subject and a verb. It can be a whole sentence. And after, they, that after must also have a subject and a verb, meaning it can be a whole sentence. So, if I just read the first part, cedar shavings covered the floor. Is that a sentence? Yes, that is a sentence. I could put a period here. I could just stop. I could cut this. I could begin a new sentence here, P, capital P. Paper was available for shredding and nest building. Is that a sentence? Yes, that is a sentence. So this could be two sentences. If you have two independent clauses, then the way to bring them together is not just a comma, but a comma and a conjunction. You need both. You also use a comma to set off a year for dates. So for example, April 18, comma, 1992, comma, was the correct date. So if you put this inside of a sentence, you not only need the comma to separate the month and day, which is the American style for writing the date, but you also need to separate out the year because this is a date. So we're separating this. If we had written something before this, we would also have a comma and separate out the date. So the date is something extra we're putting in there. Here's an exception. April 1992 was the correct month. This is not an exact date. So we're only separating it out when it is an exact date. Set off the year, you can use a, a parenthetical reference in citation. So for example, we're writing a sentence, blah, 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 and we say Patrick, comma, 1993. Now, this is our APA style, and in the MLA style, we are not going to be using the comma, but we'll look more at that later. Another example of the APA style is here writing something, Cal Kelsey, Kelsey, comma, 1993, comma, discovered something. So again, we separate it out at the end there, and we also separate out the name from the year. We also use the comma in numbers, and it's every three digits. This is also something that often confuses Chinese students because, of course, the numbering system in Mandarin is quite different. So you need to remember, and I see people make this mistake all the time, three numbers is one comma, and then three more numbers is one comma, and etc. So here we have the thousands, you have a comma, and the millions, you have a comma. There are some cases where you need to be careful not to use a comma, such as before in a restrictive clause. We've already looked at non-restrictive clause. What about a restrictive clause? A restrictive clause is different from a non-restrictive clause. Restrictive means you say something and then after that you have something and it must go together. It must be there. It cannot be taken out. Let's look at an example here. No, we don't have an example. I'll just move on. Oh, here we do. We have an example. Here's a good example. The switch that stops the recording device also controls the light. The switch. Here we go. That stops the recording device. Okay, so this is telling me something about the switch. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Now I'm going to try to read the sentence. The switch also controls the light. So the problem here is, which switch do you mean? This could be many switches. It just says the switch also controls the light. But that's not the meaning of this sentence. This sentence means a special switch. It's a special switch that stops the recording device. That switch also controls the light. So maybe there's an A switch. Maybe there's a B switch. Maybe there's a C switch. The B switch controls the recording, and the B switch also controls the light. I do not mean the A switch. I do not mean the C switch. It must be this switch. So how can I tell? You cannot cut this piece. This piece cannot be cut. If it cannot be cut, that is called a restrictive clause. Restrictive clauses, you cannot use the comma. Between two parts of a compound predicate. 
do not use a comma. So let's look at an example. All subjects completed the first phase of the experiment and returned the following week for phase two. It looks like you might be able to separate this sentence right in here, yes? This has two parts of the sentence. All subjects completed the first phase of the experiment. That is a complete sentence. That has a subject and a verb. What about the second half? Returned the following week for phase two. It does have a verb, but what does it not have? It does not have a subject. So the second part of the sentence needs to be connected to the first part of the sentence. You cannot separate them out. So you cannot put a comma here with this conjunction because remember, that would mean independent before, independent after. Here are some examples of incorrect. So all subjects completed the first phase of the experiment and returned the following week. Comma and conjunction. You must have independent before, you must have independent after, but that is not true, so this is incorrect. Do not use a comma to separate parts of measurement. So for example, if you wrote eight years, two months, or if you wrote three minutes and 40 seconds, you would not use a comma there. You just leave it as a space.